So um, my name is Ricardo Rodolfo Metalpa. I am a research scientist at the IRD, the Institute for Research and Development in New Caledonia. Work. Uh, today I'm going to present you uh, some uh, uh, two uh, of the sites I'm using as natural laboratory uh, to study the effect of ocean acidification and other parameters, the CO2 seeps in Papua New Guinea and the new um, semi-enclosed lagoon of Burake uh, in New Caledonia. Before to entry into the science, uh, I would like uh, once again uh, to give a tribute uh, to my friend Jason Spencer. He spoke uh, uh, in his presentation about what we did in, uh, in Ischia. And uh, I'm, I'm, I have two reasons for make this uh, tribute here. For, first of all, he really um, helped me and gave me the possibility to uh, participate to this important research. And uh, uh, what's more, he really invented this topic, so the use of CO2 vents to study the, the effect of ocean acidification. And that's something we, that we have, we have to, to give him, it's the merit he has. So thank you very much, Jason. If we are here today, uh, at the Icona project is also because uh, he did this work. So uh, I'm lucky I have worked uh, during my early career in uh, Ischia, that is a fantastic place to do this kind of uh, experiment, and also in the Vulcano Island. So I was lucky because my supervisor, my friend, were uh, Jason Spencer and Professor Marco Milaz. Then I moved in 2012 uh, to New Caledonia, uh, uh, which is the French overseas territories. And uh, in 2013, I got my permanent position and I had the opportunity to develop my own project. The first one in 2016 is a research, a national French research project uh, that uh, try to understand using CO2 vents in Papua New Guinea, the effect of corals on, uh, on, uh, on climate change. Okay, I don't know, I see Shigeki, no, not me. Okay, and the second one is a parallel project that used um, the Burake system that I quite discover here in UK. So the project in, uh, can you see all the, all the screen? The whole screen, yeah, see Jackie? Oh, fine, yes. Yeah. So the first project is the Carioca project, core reef acclimatization to ocean acidification in Papua New Guinea. For this project, I used, I used, two different um, CO2 sips. The most, the well-known Upa Upazina reef in Normanby Island that Catarina Fabricius has uh, studied for around 10 years. And then quite new one, the Tuntum Bay in Ambitos Island is on the north of the Papua New Guinea. And uh, that has, well, we used uh, have, it has been used for the first time by uh, Thomas Pichler um, that uh, for from a geochemistry, a volcanic uh, perspective point of view. So um, our study was the first using Tuntum Bay in a ocean acidification uh, um, um, uh, context. So to well, to better understand the differences between the two sites, um, the best way is to use a drone picture uh, that show exactly how the reef, how the vents is. So in Upa Upazina at Normandy Island, uh, you can see that the reef uh, is not, it's not really big and is as uh, published, as uh, demonstrated, um, massively uh, dominated by porites. 
uh, where the CO2 vents the, the are very strong, uh, the effect of CO2 is so important that uh, the biota disappear completely and only some seaweed and uh, fleshy algae uh, survive. This is what we can see uh, underwater in this site. So uh, plants, uh, soft corals, massive corals, and some other species all around the system. In particular, this site has been affected several times by, by bleaching, bleaching events. So during my uh, tree uh, cruise, I really noticed, I saw a degradation uh, because of the, um, of the bleaching events. In contrast, uh, the Ambitos Island Tuntum Reef uh, Bay is a large bay, bay a large bay um, down, the, the depth is down to 10 meters depth. And according to my uh, measurement, uh, the pH is quite constant all around this site. Here, in contrast to the Normanby Island site, uh, life is quite abundant. The corals diversity and the colony abundance is quite important, although uh, important CO2 vents and, uh, dis dis and uh, dispersed seeps are all around uh, the bay. So if we compare the pH variability, which is a very important uh, parameter when we have to use this site uh, as natural laboratory to study the effect of ocean acidification, if we compare the two sites, we can see, okay, the control in Ambitol is similar to control in Normandy, but the CO2, the pH variability in Normandy is much larger than in Ambitol. This is a CFET measurement of pH over, I think, four or five days in Normandy. The pH, unfortunately, can change from uh, uh, suddenly from uh, uh, normal to down 7.6. And sometimes, according to, to the weather condition, can stay, can remain at normal condition. So this is something we need to take in consideration when we use, uh, uh, when we use these sites. The pH in, uh, um, in, in Ambital is, is is, uh, you can see here that these are CFET measurements, okay? The pH irrespective of the site where I measure it, so all the bay are quite constant uh, around 7, 6, 7, 7, 7, 8. It doesn't suddenly change as I measure it in North. So this, this, this site is really, really interesting because of the uh, constant environmental condition we can uh, use for our experiment. So what my approach, I, my question was to understand, uh, try to understand the physiological plasticity of course, and uh, I used classic experiment uh, such as transplanting experiment uh, from the, the, the seeps and the, and, the, and the control sites and I measured the, the photosynthetic respiration rate using a, a semi-autonomous semi -autonomous respiration, respiratory respiration chambers. And, uh, and of course, a lot of transplanting uh, of different species. A, a second aspect that I, I'm, it was my intention to measure is, was, was also the genetic differentiation, differentiation the, the the, the change in gene expression that is very important for corals that uh, we think are adapted for a long time uh, to these extreme conditions. But unfortunately, my collaborator had never finished the job and I'm still waiting for results. I'm not happy about it. So what I measured, the, the transplantation was really a success 
because 100% of the corals I transplanted at the vents of the control at both the sites survived after a, a five to nine months transplantation. And I, I say apparently gray, grow well because I failed to measure the calcification rate using classic methods such as alkalinity or buoyant weight. So the only way I can see, I can show you uh, to say the, the, the course at the vents calcified is using uh, um, isotope geochemistry proxies like uh, boron and uh, uh, B uh, sur calcium proxy. So here we can see that the internal pH at the calcifying fluid of the corals uh, collected at the vents are lower than the conchal, but still higher to allow the corals to calcify. And the proof for that is that uh, this guy, uh, some pruritus, I transplanted in Ambito at the vents, and originally uh, these guys were two centimeters in diameter. So in nine months, it grew very well as other uh, species of coral. So there is something I don't understand. Corals can calcify maybe at lower rate in comparison to the control, but they can still calcify. About the photosynthetic rates, uh, we measure it using respiration chambers or on board. Uh, the results are quite interesting because we showed that corals at the SIPs always um, got higher gross photosynthetic rate than the reference corals. And this is interesting because it means that the, uh, all the high CO2 and in the seawater, they help the coral to photosynthesize more, or the symbiosis itself has acquired mechanism that allow for a fast, for a more efficient photosynthetic uh, photosynthesis. And some results uh, go in this direction. Um, we measure it at uh, ambitos, uh, the ingestion ingestion of the corals Pocilopora damicornis of some plankton. And we found that uh, Pocilopora damicornis ingests three times more Sinecococcus than, uh, than, uh, than at the ambient. So the corals uh, choose the prey, select the prey. And this is because, uh, and we found oh, also that uh, um, the, uh, the DN assimilation, the um, nitrogen rich diazotrophic assimilation in corals is four times higher uh, in the symbiodinium where exactly the photosynthesis happens. So it is possible that not only the corals uh, choose and select the prey, but select this prey because it can give an advantage for the photosynthetic. That's an hypothesis, a nice paper, just in case. So I, I would like to shift to the second uh, uh, laboratory, natural laboratory I'm using now. It is the semi-enclosed lagoon of Burake, a place that I love because we are speaking in this system not only about ocean acidification, but also about warming, about the oxygenation. is a, a very complex system uh, where three or more environmental factors interact in a natural lab. Uh, and that's made me very happy because uh, each day I go there, I can find something different. So this site is particularly in its uh, um, morphology uh, briefly, seawater that come inside the system uh, with a mountain tide fill all the um, forest and sediment uh, basin uh, on behind uh, the, the system. And then on falling, falling, falling tide, these changed in the seawater and the chemistry seawater go outside. 
So it's not so easy because the model we are developing say that uh, this mass of seawater is not that is not doesn't come and go out. It stay inside and make this job seven times. So it change further is uh, its chemical composition. It's a very complex system. At this system, you can find, uh, if I remember, uh, 20, uh, 20 species of algae, uh, 12 sponges, and 66 species of corals that are the same or quite similar in number and in the diversity of the control uh, I choose far away from, uh, from the system. So, the first time we measured the environmental condition at the site was in 2016 and with Emma Camp and David Sajet. And we, we, we showed that uh, using uh, three, four days uh, of data, we showed that uh, the pH uh, vary according to the tide from uh, sometimes very low pH, 7.3, to 7.9, it can arrive to eight, depending on the area uh, where uh, we are in the system. And that uh, oxygen has the same trend, so it corresponds to the tide, uh, the tide change. So I, my, it was my intention to reinforce this data and so during the last three years, because it's very important to, re, to really um, have the strong data uh, strong environmental data uh, when we use uh, such a kind of natural laboratory. Do not, not make mistake to, to, forgot, uh, to forget uh, a parameters that can affect the response of organ. So during the last three years, I made a lot of measurement and we recently modeled uh, these, uh, these data. So we confirmed that the pH variation uh, depend of, uh, of the, the tide and that in Burake, the pH can vary from 7.3 to sometimes 8.1. But the most important thing is that the corals and the organism there, each six hours, um, have to cope with a 5-6 pH unit change. That is, is huge each day of the year. The same is for the oxygen. The oxygen in uh, the pen uh, from the tidal is lower at low tide, higher at high tide, but is always lower than the reference. So 20% less than the reference side, and sometimes it go very, very low. The temperature is uh, as well interesting. Is not, um, is, it can be colder. The red is the burake, the blue is the control, so you can see that you can see that temperature in winter is colder than outside than the control, but in summer is higher. So we can have a range. We have a range from 21 to 30, uh, 33 degrees Celsius with hot spot up to uh, 30, 33. Uh, repetition, sorry. And each day, especially during summer, corals uh, had to cope with a three to five degree Celsius uh, variation. Okay, among the chemicals measurement we made, uh, one is very important uh, and is dissolved and particulate organic matter concentration. Because as you know, this is a mangrove area. So uh, when the, the tide is falling, so the water comes from the mangrove, it is rich in organic uh, dissolved and particulate, particulate matter. And one of the hypotheses is that can help uh, to survive. So uh, it is clear that if from the control, from the outer reef, to the inner part of uh, this system, these two um, chemicals increase. So, a lot of questions from this measurement. This is our just some. What is the mechanism that allow corals to survive? Is it possible that their tolerance is simply due to environmental variability or 
can the contribution of higher organic concentration just justify the resistance? What is, is a physiological plasticity? Is a cell local selection? So a change in gene expression? What about the microbiome, sangue lineage? Lot of questions for, for this uh, special site. So uh, we try to understand uh, better what is going on in the system. We first uh, um, measure the uh, coralline crustose algae dissolution cover uh, during a two year deployment using tile that were already covered by CCA. And it was no surprise to see that uh, the coverage of CCA in Burake decreased dramatically, uh, will stay constant at the reference, and the fleshy uh, and tough algae take place uh, of the CCA. This is not surprise, but we measure, and is the effect of the low pH, uh, or at least on soft some species like CCA that are very sensitive to uh, pH and dissolution. So what about the coral reproduction? Uh, we, we didn't know if they could reproduce in such a hard condition, but we observed spawning uh, two times uh, during two different years of different species. So they can reproduce. And uh, what about the, the probability of finding a fecund polyps, uh, in, for, for instance, in Montipora gitata, we found that, yeah, Burake is a little bit less, the probability uh, in the comparison to the control, but anyway, very high. And if we measure the number of eggs per polyp in Burake, we found always for Montipora that is quite similar to one of the two control we choose. And we have no explanation for what happened in C1. Uh, but this, this is a working project, project by uh, my uh, PhD student, Alessi, Cinzia Alessi. So what more in the future? What about the coral recruitment? Also using the same titles, we counted a lot of recruits settled in the tile, even more than at the reference uh, R2 and M1. So uh, what, what, what is that? Why that? Potentially they have a, a different uh, energetic investment uh, in the reproduction, but that's only a, an hypothesis. What's happened to the recruits when they arrived to settle and so they have to face during the early life stage to a very hard condition uh, for, to test that using the Corus Possilo Paradamicolum. We collected colonies from the two environments. This is Burake, this is the control. And we uh, settled in Aquaria at two different pH, uh, the recruits and followed for four months, if I remember. So we measured the lateral growth. And of course, we found a decrease in calcification. So the lateral growth of Passiopola de Micronis was affected by pH, um, but they survived. So there is an effect on the core growth, but they survived. What about the coral calcification, the effect of seawater pH and seawater pH variability, because in the literature, it was found that, that, that when a population live in an environment that has a very high um, environmental variability, it, it, this variability make it more stronger, more strong. So we tested this hypothesis uh, on uh, three different species in Aquarius, obvious, obvious uh, using colonies from uh, Burake and the Control and maintaining them during 100 days at uh, uh, 74, 77, 8, 1, the constant level, but also we reproduce a variable change in pH uh, quite similar to what we measure in Burake. So, I'm going to show you Montipora and Prites growth rates. And uh, surprisingly, 
uh, always uh, irrespective of the pH and both species always grow better at Burak. So this is a very important result because it show that uh, something happened on this course. They are maybe adapted, they are physiologically adapted, but something happened. They resist to this pH and grow better than the coach. This is also, um, we can see these results also again using uh, geochemistry proxies. Here you can find the internal pH of corals from Murake and from the control. And similar to what we showed, we, we, we saw before, the pH, the internal pH of corals from Murake are, lo are lower than the control, but still higher to, um, to guarantee uh, calcification at the uh, at inside the calcification fluids. And these results is really interesting because it shows that inside the calcification fluid, the corals from Burake are able to increase the DIC concentration. So make the calcification more easy, uh, even if the pH outside is very low. I think I finished. Uh, I thank you very much for listening to me. And I hope really to see you soon here in, uh, in Burake or maybe in Ambitol uh, within the um, ICONA um, project. Thanks a lot.